about something that has been consistent all year, and that is one Shohei Otani. We did a deep dive into this AL MVP race in the pregame show. Aaron Judge, yeah, he hit 454 today. But Shohei Otani hit two. He's got 32 on the season as we go back. And the Angels got things started early in the first. But Shohei Otani coming up here and uh, would get things rolling in the first inning. Fletch a one-out single. Shohei with a double. That would make it second and third. Shohei and Trout. Uh, we were wondering early in the third inning after uh, Shohei Otani would get this done. A two-run shot, his 31st of the year at the time, 382 feet, and that was a rocket. He could be on his way to the cycle, GA, but that was a no-doubter over that yellow line. Yellow line, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think about how close he was. That first at bat, that could have been. He could have had a three-run home, home run night right there. I'm telling you what, Shohei Otani is continuing to go out there and play this game at a different level. Even on the nights when it's Detroit in town, he's going to go out there and still give you his best effort. I'm telling you what, he, I, I just, I wouldn't bet against Otani down the stretch here. I think he's going to do a lot of stuff to just wake up some people and really make them think long and hard about giving that MVP trophy to somebody else other than himself. Yeah, we did a spray chart earlier showing where Trout and Otani are hitting their home runs. Joe Hay not shy, as you talked about, G.A. waiting and hitting it the other way. That was 416 feet, 108.6 miles an hour off the bat. Certainly an impressive night for Shohei Otani, who ended the night three for five, two homers, three RBI, and that double that we showed you. But Tim, let's talk about Mike Trout. I mean, ever since coming back from that injury, 30 days away from the game, he has been the Mike Trout that we're used to seeing. Well, we have, and, you know, that's been the one thing, you know, coming back, he was out for such a long time, getting his legs under him, and you're starting to see him run the ball or run the bases and yeah. do some things in the outfield, more like we're used to seeing. I, I just find it amazing. I mean, with all that time off, he didn't really do any, re he didn't do a rehab assignment, so the fact that he was able to just pick his swing up as, as quickly as he did. I mean, Garrett, you remember, I mean, when you come back midseason after an injury, it's difficult when everybody else is in midseason form to get that timing and rhythm back, and he's done a great job. And again, you know, hitting the off-speed pitch, that changeup for the home run, that tells you everything you need to know right there. When you're hitting the fastballs to right center field and you're able to hit that off-speed pitch and pull it, I mean, good hitters get jammed. Hey, you know what? You beat the fastball, and they say, what do we need next? But, you know, Mike does a great job of using the whole field, and that's what makes him so successful. Yeah, and just this short swing, I didn't think he'd have a problem coming back too quick. But as you pointed out, you know, as a hitter, you do need your legs. And uh, it's evident that he has his legs under him now, being able to keep keep his uh, keep back and stay and keep that ball fair. Yeah. 116 feet, 111 miles an hour was that home run. And, gee, one thing you pointed out to me watching him tonight, he always keeps inside the baseball, and he oh. rarely gets jammed. He rarely hits the pulls a foul ball. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah. His swing is set up to hit the ball center field to right center, and that's why he's always able to keep the off-speed pitch fair down the line. And and I dare you, there's not too many times that you're going to see him pull a ball foul just because he stays inside the yeah, ball. And I'll say this, uh, I, I, he's not afraid to get jammed. I mean, I think yeah. good hitters get jammed. He keeps yeah. his hands inside the ball. That first at bat, fastball beat him a little bit. Hey, fine, it beat me. I took, I got a knock out of it. But that just, his whole approach is staying inside the ball, using the big part of the field. And that allows him to cover more than just a fastball, more than just a certain pitch on a certain part of the plate. He really has good plate discipline because of his approach and his ability to stay centered. GA, when you look at how the season's shaping up and going down the home stretch and Houston again is next, and, and we, we were discussing, all of us, about how they've been so good against Toronto, so good mm -hmm. against New York. You know, obviously that's two out of three against Houston, but they see him again very soon. What type of pitches will Trout and Otani start seeing as these are must-win games for some of these playoff teams? I mean, they're definitely going to, you know, try to jam these guys up. They're not going to let them get their arms extended. So they are going to make it tough on them. They're a better team than the other, you know, the Yankees and the Toronto. Their pitching staff is better. Better, so it's definitely going to get a little tougher this weekend. Well, I think it's a little different than dodging Judge like last week. I mean, you, you pick your poison. Is it going to be Otani or Trout? You're going to judge Renifo swinging a great bat. Fletcher's going to, you know, do enough to, you know, put the pressure on the pitcher and put men on base. I think you're seeing that depth in the lineup. And, yeah, there's going to be certain bats that, you know, they might navigate and be able to dodge one of the big boys. But mm -hmm. generally speaking, that's what makes this lineup good when they're all healthy is you start creating some depth. And, you know, just imagine if Rendon was in this lineup. I mean, now you're really talking about about, you know, who do you dodge? I mean, it's pick your poison on any of these guys. So um, I, I, as much as down the stretch they can play spoiler and teams are going to be trying to navigate those lineups, I think it's going to be difficult to, you know, to really be able to eliminate some of these guys from the lineup on a consistent basis. And both you guys have preached regularity in the lineup, and we're starting to see yep. that with at least one through five, the same guys knowing who's in front of you, knowing who's behind you. You guys said that.
that was a big thing with you two when you were playing. Well, <laughs> he was always behind me. I, I, was, I always <laughs> knew that, you know what, hey, just give a good at bat, walks as good as a hit, because if I get on base, I'm going to hold a guy on first base <laughs> holding me on, and he's going to have a hole right yeah. side, and he likes to pull. Yeah, it, 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 all, it all works together. You know, that's just the way the game works. All right.